faith leaders gathered here today, uh, together with the scientists, are united in reminding us that addressing climate change is an urgent moral imperative. And science has made it simply, plainly clear that climate change is uh, happening. Uh, it's happening because of uh, human behavior. That was U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon during a Holy See U.N. environmental conference at the Vatican last month. In a joint statement, the Vatican and all the participants affirmed that, quote, human-induced climate change is a scientific reality, and its decisive mitigation is a moral and religious imperative for humanity. To discuss the issue of climate change and whether it is, in fact, induced by humans, what the science tells us, and the importance of Pope Francis's support, I'm joined on set by Mark Morano, who is the publisher of Climate Depot and a member of the Heartland Institute. And next to him, Carol Andres. She is the director of legislative operations for the Environmental Defense Fund. Thank you both for being here. I want to start with the science, what we know. Is this settled science? Carol. Yes, yes. Uh, the science is settled. Uh, we scientists have known for centuries that these gases can accumulate into the atmosphere, when accumulating in the atmosphere, can trap heat. Mm -hmm. uh, we can trace it directly to human activities. And you don't need to be a scientist to know that something is happening. We have essentially weather on steroids. We have hurricanes that are more fierce. We have droughts that are more severe. Mm. Uh, American, the American public knows something strange is going on with our weather. You know, uh, that the, as Carol says that, Mark, it reminds me of something that was actually in this joint declaration, where it said, um, uh, the, talking about the poor, it says there are clear climate disruptions, increased frequency of droughts, extreme storms, heat waves, and rising sea levels. You know, this is where, this is where there's a huge scientific debate, and the United United Nations would like you to think there isn't, because the United Nations is a, essentially their climate panel is a political body masquerading as a science organization. And the points Carol just made are demonstrably not true. On, let's take weather for an example. On every on climate timescales of 50 to 100 years, on droughts, hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, there's not only no increase on these, there's actually record decreases on some of them. They're either falling short or going in the opposite direction. Droughts, 60 years globally, there's no trend. Hurricanes. We're not having stronger hurricanes. We're having the lowest uh, hurricane drought currently, the lowest level, uh, nine years going on 10 years, of no Category 3 or larger hurricane making landfall. It's the longest period since probably the Civil War since we've been measuring. Uh, tornadoes, big tornadoes are down. Floods, journals show up to 100 years. Floods are showing no trends are declining. Climate is governed by hundreds of factors. Yes, we know CO2 is a greenhouse effect, but it is not the control knob of the climate. That's where the debate is, and that's where, the, where this idea that it's settled is absurd, because there's Carol, so many scientists dissenting. Some groups say uh, the, the 2013 Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that they failed to recognize this pause in global warming. Is that an issue? Do they have a point? There's been this sort of 18-year pause where you don't, it's not warming up. I can't speak to that. I, the, uh, uh, you can't speak to I it. can't speak to that particular IPCC uh, anomaly. anomaly. Uh, the, I mean, the fact is, you know, uh, this is pretty basic physics, uh, what we're talking about in terms of the gases uh, and the effect that they have on trapping heat. Uh, the, uh, it, it's, and we, you know, the fact is, it's common sense that if we're going to be throwing up, if we're going to be burning uh, and, and putting unlimited pollution into the air, mm -hmm. that eventually it's going to have an impact. It's, 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 yeah. it's not unlike dumping a bunch of toxic chemicals into a uh, pond and it, expecting the frogs to be okay. They're, they're simply not. We're seeing, we're seeing observations. The, the most, one of the most important things are the observations. And the fact is you probably can find somebody to, to be skeptical about everything, right? Mm. Especially in this internet yeah. day and age. I can't speak to that. And there has been, according to the satellite data, multiple satellites, 18 years, five months currently.
currently with no global warming. If you look back at the ensemble of climate models, out of 117 models, 114 over predicted warming, and predicted warming that didn't occur. So the models have been failing. In terms of you know, this simple settled physics and science, we've had ice ages with CO2 five times higher than we are today. The geologic history of the Earth contradicts these claims. Major UN scientists have now turned against the organization. People like Dr. Richard Toll was a lead author in the last mm -hmm. climate report from the UN. He says that the 97% consensus, which I'm sure Carol would, would subscribe to, uh, and all you hear in the media, was pulled out of thin air. And this is UN scientists now turning against the organization, saying that it's politicizing the science. They're, what, they're campaigning. The preponderance of the scientific evidence is clear. Evidence being you can what believe, evidence You can that? choose to believe otherwise, but the preponderance There's of no scientific change. evidence. That there is climate that change. That there is climate change. That is clear. Okay, and, and I think what Carol is referring to, the CO2 levels, if you look at the pre-industrial age, you've got 280 sure. ppms. When you measured it in 2013, you had 400, 400. ppms. So clearly, something is happening. Right. The question is, sure. and the question in my mind, frankly, as I look at this is, why, do we know why the surety? I mean, we've got the UN and now the Vatican coming out and saying, uh, I'm, I'm not certainly disputing the science, it's obvious. The question is, is it human induced? And can you prove that? You would say what, Carol? Yes, yes. They're able to track the CO2 levels in the atmosphere and trace that to human activity. Look, scientists are more certain about the human contributions to climate change than they are that smoking causes cancer. Now, are there still people who will maintain that smoking doesn't cause cancer? Sure, we will find those skeptics, they exist. But the, but the preponderance of evidence, the, the large body of scientific uh, evidence points to this being a problem. And in the light of that, we have a choice. Do we want to try to continue as business as usual or do we want to try to act in, in the face of, of, of trying to be cautious, trying to make sure that we're leaving a planet for our children, for our grandchildren, that's no less worse off than it is today. It's Mark. offensive for her to, be, to mention tobacco as though CO2, which is a gas of life, it is not a pollutant under any definition of pollution. Let's get that straight. In the United Nations and the, in, the scientists promoting this are handpicked by governments in the United Nations. And the head of the UN climate panel had said they're at the beck and call of governments. And what do those governments want? They have an agenda. They openly say that they want to redistribute wealth by climate policy. So they're using the science as as a partisan campaign effort for centralized government planning so wait, wait, through so the United you, Nations. So you're suggesting the United Nations is using climate change uh, as a development tool? As a, as a, as a self-enrichment tool, self-interest tool, and as a way for they can be in charge of the developing world's development. So that's why the, yes. Pope's, the Pope's encyclical is so, is so inspiring. Uh, because here's a man who cares deeply about God's creation, about humankind, about caring for the poor, mm. And that's, climate change has a real impact. I want to, I want to roll, sure. this is Ban Ki-moon talking about just this, the Pope's endorsement and the forthcoming encyclical. I want both your reaction to this. There is a very small window of opportunity which we can uh, change this course. I'm sure that uh, this encyclical will have a profound impact in the discussions of climate change. And I'm, I'm also, uh, uh, hopeful that his uh, address to the Joint Congress in the United States and his address in the special session, summit session of the United Nations General Assembly will have a profound uh, impact. Uh, I counted on his moral voice, moral leadership. Yeah. Mark, there's no doubt that this gives the climate change movement, the oh, folks yes. at the UN, real dynamism as Gravity they march time. toward December and the Paris meeting. Yes. The Pope's going to be uh, continuing this, I imagine, when he visits the UN and Congress. Yeah, I was at that UN press conference with mm -hmm. Ban Ki-moon, and first of all, they didn't allow questions. They shut me down and threatened to remove me because I wasn't in their question approved question list. What Ban Ki-moon uh, was talking about there was essentially a self-interested promotion of the United Nations agenda, which the Pope is giving huge weight and gravitas and heft behind. Mm -hmm. The problem is 
Previous popes, and, and as a Catholic, you look at it and you say, yes, we care for God's creation. That's a moral issue. Mm -hmm. It is not a moral issue to limit carbon dioxide, which is not a pollutant. And it's not a moral issue to support a United Nations political solution. And that's the problem here. And I think the pope is, uh, is lending his name to a UN political process, and it's going to confuse a lot of Catholics. Carol, when, when uh, humans are identified, and they are here and, and in the science and in all the, the UN data, uh, as the prime instigator here, and we see an explosion of population in a place like Pakistan. What's the solution? Well, so the good part about having humans be part of the problem is that we also can be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And there are things that humans can do uh, to help address this problem. Uh, the, uh, I mean, overpopulation is certainly a concern, but there's certainly a lot we can do to, to, the, uh, to our uh, how we conduct our lives to minimize our footprint. Mm -hmm. um, there is the concern, and I, and I know you know this, that uh, and even some of the folks, Jeffrey Sachs, the economist, and others yes. who were at the UN conference and the Vatican conference, their answer for part of this is you've got to limit those populations. And contraceptives, abortion, availability, that should be part of the solution as well. Do you agree with that? You know, I have a tremendous confidence an American can do and in the mm -hmm. and in the ability of technology to find efficient really innovative ways to tackle this problem and I think if we can get the right policies in place not only in the US but around the world we will find that unleashes some innovation that allows us to continue to grow the economy mm -hmm. to address population growth and to and to and to tackle this problem, I really think it's a very positive. I have much more confidence in the American and then in the, in the industry's ability to respond to this challenge. Well, this is the UN, yeah, the, well, I the agree. Vatican. I agree. <laughs> hardly <laughs> hardly areas of confidence, yeah. Carol. Those two organizations. But I'm going to leave that on the side. Yeah. Mark, you, are you concerned that the Pope is is um, unwittingly enabling an agenda here or a movement that might encroach on other parts of Catholic teaching, mainly uh, contraception and abortion and supporting that in some tangential yeah, way. There's no doubt that the, the, the people that the Vatican invited into this climate eco summit on April 28th were people that were directly at odds with the United with the Vatican's view on many key issues. I called it an unholy alliance. As you mentioned, Jeffrey Sachs openly supports multiple abortion, abor legalized abortion throughout Africa as a way to reduce population. He's a, a subscriber to the population bomb concept. You know, Jeffrey Sachs, who said that skeptics have blood on their hands every time a storm happens around the world. The Pope is relying on a very narrow scientific view of even that people in the global warming establishment find extreme. People like Peter Wadhams, who advised the Vatican, he's been called doing charts that have no basis in physics. Naomi Oreskes was another signer of that Vatican document. She has called for in favor of RICO statutes to silence skeptics, treat us like organized crime. And you have a German climate advisor who won CO2 budgets for every man, woman, and child on the planet. A massive centralized planning. I, too, have faith in the human spirit. We don't need the UN to come up with better technology. Solar and wind is less than 5% of our energy in the United States. There's no way carbon-based energy is going anywhere anytime soon, especially in the developing world. That's where they need it the most. And it's the most pro-development thing you can do is have carbon-based energy in the developing world where 1.3 billion people don't have running water and electricity. A carbon tax has been proposed as a solution. A good one, and what would it accomplish? Um, if the if the idea if the goal is to limit CO2, we need to limit we need to limit carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. A carbon tax is a somewhat indirect way of tackling that problem. Uh, but uh, look, we would love to be in a position where we can begin talking about some of these solutions, mm -hmm. some of these policy solutions. Uh, at the at, in Congress, we think Congress has an obligation to act on this. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, though, we have proposals being put forward by the administration that will take a step in the right direction and put us on a path to that uh, that's more sustainable, that actually starts to tackle this problem so that future generations aren't left with such mm. a disaster. You know, the so-called solutions that. she's talking about, the EPA regulations, oh, you know, President Obama is going around saying they're going to help reduce storminess. And the bottom line is they won't even reduce CO2 level. They won't even impact that, let alone any kind of climate change. It's pure symbolism with huge economic costs and major costs for the developing world. If we had to rely on the UN or Congress to save us, we would all be doomed. Thank God we don't face the climate catastrophe. That Final question. Plan. What do you think we're going to see in the days ahead? The Pope is coming here in September. That conference is just in December. Predict for me. Carol, what do you think will Well, come I hope it's the beginning of a 
thoughtful conversation about solutions to the climate problem. I hope it actually inspires people to start thinking about and, and changing how they view their, their, the, how their activities impact the, not, only the, not only human health now, but human health in the future. Um, I hope it really is. I hope we, in a couple of years we look back on this summer as the tipping point in the U.S., but in the world at really trying to tackle this problem. Mark? Right. Well, I would say Pope, both Pope Benedict and John Paul II both expressed similar concerns about environment, climate, and I think all Catholics are concerned about, especially the environment and, and God's creation, mm -hmm. where the difference and where the Vatican is taking an extra step that has people alarmed uh, is the fact that they're getting such a tight partnership with the United Nations, excluding any skeptical scientists, which the Vatican under Pope Benedict did not do, and the Pope is now going to speak at the United Nations in possibly the same role that Leonardo DiCaprio did last year, sort of in a lobbying effort for a specific UN climate treaty. That would be unprecedented for the Vatican, and that's what I think has us concerned at the moment. Mm, well, we will keep watching it. Thank you both for being with us, Carol, Mark. Thank you. We Rana. will stay in touch.